the Bank of International Settlements. It's the central bank or central bank in Basel, Switzerland. It's the most influential bank on the planet. And so forever, gold was a tier three asset, meaning that it was only 50% was calculated on the balance sheet. And, and, and so it incentivized countries to not hold it. This is one of the reasons that the U.S. held all of the world's gold, because what they would do at the end of World War II is, look, you know, Europe had been ravaged by two world wars. And so the U.S. not only was the, the dominant industrial engine, but the military superpower and the, the you know, land of the free and across the Atlantic Ocean, it was safe from the tyranny that had that Europe had been um, involved with for for you know two world wars. So they they said, how about this? You give us your gold, and we'll pay you thirty five bucks an ounce for it. You take that and buy our treasures. Now you'll make interest on a non interest bearing asset. You don't have to store it. You don't have to worry about the security of it. We'll hold it. We're the we're the allies. We're the we're the good guys. We'll protect it. And we'll always guarantee to sell it back to you at 35 bucks an ounce. So it was a win-win for everyone. They would take the proceeds of a non-interest bearing asset and buy uh, and give it to us, all knowing they can always buy it back for what they sold it for. But in the meantime, they would earn compounding interest on reinvestment of those proceeds into, into treasuries. Well, um, a tier three asset on your balance sheet means you can only have 50% of it showing what it is and and the fact that it, it didn't earn any interest and the fact that it costs money to store it and protect it you know incentivize the world to not really hold it and quietly the central bank or central bank the most prominent bank on the planet said well by the way it's now the only other tier one asset on the planet so you have us dollars and treasuries and and gold which according to the most powerful bank in the world is now a riskless asset. To give you an idea of what it really means is I lend you a million dollars. I give you a check. You agree to pay it back. But in the meantime, you give me a briefcase filled with a million dollars in pounds in cash. Um, you know, do I have any risk? No. You know, if, if you're or, or give me a million dollars, let's take the currency risk down. So you give me a million dollars in hundred dollar bills. Do I have any risk? No, I have a, a riskless form of collateral. Um, that's more or less what they're saying. Tier one is it's it's a an asset that has no risk according to the central banks. And so, if nothing else, it becomes very prominent in my mind in what is coming next. And when you realize that you know the BIS is no one to play with. This is a country that, or a bank that has told all of the member banks that by 2025, they all must have an operational central bank digital currency. This is, is you know, the very top of the food chain. So um, that's who, who made the, the admission. And that's why the banks that repatriated their gold and started buying it a year, almost two and a half years before the BIS made this announcement, they're all part of the organization. They probably said, listen, I'm going to make this change. If I were you, I would start accumulating gold and bring back what the West is holding. It wasn't just, you know, wasn't just the U.S. They also repatriated quite a bit from the Bank of England. So all of these countries are, are holding their gold. And if you, I don't know if you saw the interview recently with, I believe it was the Dutch finance minister who talked about all the gold that they hold in what they call a revaluation account. Um, gold is, is not on the balance sheet. Now, um, almost all of the gold that is held on the balance sheets of the European countries is at $35 an ounce, the way that it was forever. And they haven't ever revalued it. Furthermore, they're not allowed to um, offset it against liabilities on their balance sheet. And, what he, and it's interesting, they put it in a name called a revaluation account. Basically, what he was saying is that if we revalue gold to a level that uh, not only at, at, at 19, 18, $1,900 where it is now, but let's put it at 5,000 or higher and peg it. it, it renders all of our fractured balance sheets um, solvent. And so there is a plan in store for gold. A lot of people think it will be revalued and then become a peg to a new world reserve standard because quite frankly, the West has screwed the pooch very badly. The West has mismanaged horribly um, the, the world reserve currency. And I think you 
you know, I think you are seeing kind of a pushback against that where um, people have had enough, the world has had enough. And when we weaponized the dollar and made the decision of freezing assets and kicking the, the, the Russians out of SWIFT, if nothing else, it made a whole lot of countries say, you know what, we better find an alternative source before this happens to us. 